Everybody and welcome to episode 11 of the Pixar Perspective, our Pixar retrospective. We are in the half. We are in the halfway point officially. We have. Oh God. We have just finished 10 episodes, and we have 10 episodes ahead of us. Well, 11 oh, if you God. count this current one, but I am not going to. Yeah, and that's, yes. that's pretty incredible. Let's that's- introduce ourselves. Or not. Um, I'm or random not, bystander yeah. here. I'm random bystander here. Um, Wash. Wash, are you are you alive? Are you dead? I'm I playing I'm my- playing chicken with Kirby. <laughs> I am a toy. <laughs> you are Kirby fan. And you are a sad, strange little man. And welcome to Pixar Spectrum! <laughs> <laughs> welcome to our discussion in. on Toy Story 1. I think you're off by a couple numbers there. Yes, welcome to our discussion on Toy Story 3. 2010's oh. Toy Story 3. 2010's Toy Story Jeez. 3. Next year, this movie will be a decade old. That's right. It's weird, to think up, it's weird to think Up was a decade old then. But that's not Up. This is Toy Story 3. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's what's down. Now, mm, yeah, now my question is, yes. should we start with our experience on the film, or should we give the background first? Because I know Wash wanted to bring up some specific <laughs> background. Yeah, I, I think I think our history is a good thing to start with. That's a good point, but I think, as usual, we start with our history. Let, yeah, and, yeah. Can, and then can, we can get into the background. Oh, yeah. Okay, who wants to go first? Because we, I'm pretty sure we all have a very... In- Actually, you know what? I kind of want Wash to go last. Actually, it really doesn't matter because we all have very unique stories with this one, I believe. That is true. That is a very good point. Okay. So we can decide, but I don't want to go last. I know that. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, if you don't want to go last, you can go first. Oh, uh, okay. So bro, mine's probably the least unique anyway, so it works. Um, I remember seeing this in a Super Bowl ad and was like, oh my God, finally, I've been waiting all this time for this. Out of all the Pixar sequels they could have done... And Pixar's finally making a sequel, and not just a sequel, a sequel to one of the best franchises, Toy Story 3. And it's supposed to take place years later, when Andy's all grown up, and now we get to figure out what happens to them? Oh my god. And I remember, I was like hyped, it was a movie we all were hyped for. We all, like, everybody I know wanted to see Toy Story 3. We were, like, so hyped for it. My, This is one of the... F- it is, I saw Pix- I saw Toy Story 3 in theaters, but so did my mom, so did, and so did my sister. And I think maybe someone else went... A friend of ours went at the time as well to see it. And I just remember the theater being filled with children and adults. And it was, it was a heck of a ride seeing it for the first time. It was just... There was lots of fun... Lots of emotions, lots of drama, lots of crying, lots of suspensefulness, lots of crying, lots of memories, and lots more crying. And it was just a fantastic, fantastic experience. And I was low-key... I mentioned this before and up, but I was obsessed with Toy Story 3. I pro- It's probably the Pixar film I've watched the most. Even more than Finding Nemo. Mm. And... Like, cause I, cause at least with Finding Nemo, it was forced. With Toy Story Three, it was voluntary. I <laughs> was so ups- I even brought this film with me to school once to watch it on my last day of high school <laughs> because I was that obsessed. And I think that's why I was so obsessed with it because Andy was moving to go off to college, and I, and I believe, not this year, but like, but n- not the year it came out, but it was like the summer, like. I think before my junior year of high school. So I wound up watching it more and more the more closer I got to graduating high school. So it just hit home like, oh God, I'm going to be Andy and I'm going to be going to college and I'm not going to get out of it until 2019. <laughs> but but uh, seriously, it was it just related to me a lot and it was a huge, 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 huge favorite of mine for the longest time. Hmm? 
High praise. Hey, it was such high praise <laughs> at the time, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Oh my god, spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alright, you two decide next. I guess I can go second. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned in the last episode, in 2010, I was on a trip to Poland, and I remember the movie came out when I was in, in when I was in Poland, and I wanted to go see it, but the nearest theater that was playing it was like four hours away, which wasn't ideal. Putting it lightly. So I ended up having to wait until I got back home, and it turned out that like right after I came back home, my parents surprised with a with a camping trip. So we all went uh, went on a camping trip, and um, nearby the, our campsite was a drive-in theater that was playing Toy Story three. And by this time, the the movie had already um, it, it already been out for a while, and already the 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 buzz has been has been out that, folks, this is the sad one. I, I was trying to get prepared for it, and I remember we were because we were watching it in the in the, in the drive-in theater. And I was in the I was in the passenger seat, and my parents were in the driver's seat. And as soon as it got started, I got so transfixed that that I I clung up against the the uh, my dad's driver's seat and like breathing on his neck, <laughs> trying to like <laughs> capture everything in my in my memories. And then my parents said, "Do you want to move to the front seats?" I said, "Yes, yes." So we, so I switched over and I ended up like clung to the driving wheel just the whole way through, just transfixed at what I was watching, and and that became the the first time I cried in a movie. I surpassed Up. I did not surpass Toy Story three, and <laughs> and as and as Random said, a huge part of that is the timing of this. We're not we're not all the same age. But we all grew up, uh, grew up in the same uh, school year, so this was right around the time it was this. It was smack middle of high school, college was in the horizon, and it's and 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 also it's been 15 years since Toy Story one. So God, and we'll we'll talk about like about how this film kind of approaches the the. That that distance and that history with uh with two films, that that ended up and ended up being like one of the best like theater experiences ever. Oh yeah, it's it's still a memorable experience for me too. Yeah, like yeah, I there's there's I think there's I'm trying to think if there's there's a couple right ones that rival for it. One that's Pixar related for me, and one that is not Pixar related. Yeah, but, yeah. I, but, I I know I know there's one Pixar related that's the worst experience, but we'll get to that one. Um, oh yeah, yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to that oh, one. Boy. Kirby fan, talk about it before I mention Good Dinosaur for the. Uh, t- no, that was the, one of the best. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say, what are you talking about? Oh yeah, good for Wash at least. Sorry, I I great Kirby fan. Your story with Toy Story three. Go going in to Toy Story three. The, the hype wasn't as big as it was for YouTube because, as I've said uh, a sad amount of times up to this point, um, this was still in the phase where I was still in my fa- This is in the phase where I was in my phase <laughs> of thinking that, you know, dish movies, cartoon, that means it's for kids. But the difference here was that it was Toy Story and I grew up on it, which is kind of the hook that got a lot of people excited for Toy Story 3. So I remember being pretty excited for this one, and obviously going into it, it kind of fixed my perception on movies. Uh, a big part of that was the movie being a movie that I really enjoyed when I watched it, but also because I, I was I was getting close to watch at this point. We, uh, we had this is not when we started, but a little while into our friendship, and he would always talk to me about movies and about Pixar movies and stuff. And Pixar movies, I could follow along because I watched them when I was a kid. But this, this was going to be the one that, you know, I watched it and we could actually talk about it without me having to have, you know, rely on my memory of my nostalgia and stuff. So we would talk about Toy Story 3 a lot. And I think one of my favorite memories, honestly, leading up to Toy Story 3, uh, me and him were walking around during gym one day. We were on a, a, a walk track and he bought this up to me. He said, Toy Story 1, you know, has a reason to exist and Toy Story 2 
as a sequel, as a follow-up, has a different reason to exist. What about Toy Story 3? Why does Toy Story 3 need to exist? <laughs> that, for some reason, that's always stuck with me, and I don't know why. Mm-hmm. I, d- I'll, I'll discuss whether or not I agree with it. Um, <laughs> but at the time, I just didn't have an answer. I, I didn't know. Why, why did it have to exist? Um, but going to see the movie when I saw it for the first time, I loved it. Uh, I wanted to see it again. I only saw it once in theaters, but I wanted to see it again. Cried at the ending. All all the stuff you hear everybody say about Toy Story 3. Mm-hmm. I went in relatively blind. I didn't know that this was, quote unquote, the sad one. But I was definitely very pleased with what I saw at the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm going to uh, add to that because what I remember... The, I don't remember saying that, but I remember... I know, I- and it's... I, it's the worst part of that memory is that you don't remember saying that. <laughs> and uh, and I, even though I knew them both in middle school, we went to the different high school, so I can't confirm or deny anything. <laughs> I wasn't there. But I, 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 I remember, like, I remember not remembering this. And, like, after the movie came out, I was like, oh, yeah, this is great. This is wonderful. And you said, but you just said that what's the point of this movie? And I said, no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, all defensive I, too i remember that also yeah yeah and, and looking back that is that is probably something i had said but because of the because of confirmation bias that bias. changed my memories <laughs> <laughs> that's like no i always defended this movie what are you talking i about? always <laughs> liked toy story 3 i never thought it was gonna be pointless i liked it I before never it was thought, cool i always thought it would always be the way to end off toy story and no sequels would come after that uh okay well uh, you know we'll that's a good that. point <laughs> because that, that's a good segue into this um this episode has come out after toy story 4 but we're before rec- toy story 4 no 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 we're currently recording it before toy story 4 yeah. the episode oh. is going to be coming out two weeks after Okay, so yeah, yeah, if you don't, this is why we're not talking about anything related to Toy Story 4, because we're not psychic, and it hasn't come out yet. Oh no, you know what, I I just realized it's actually four weeks. This is coming out four weeks after the Toy Story 4. Yeah, Yeah. we we have no idea if Toy Story 4 is going to be good or not. Yeah, Yeah, no idea. We might have like a, some, a little bit, a little talk at the very end about uh, some, some like minor speculations, but we... (laughs) We're, we're, we're only coming in from the perspective of the previous two Toy Story films. That's it. That's it. We, it's, and it's not like uh, Incredibles where we, we went into that having already seen Incredibles 2. We are totally blind here. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's going to be really interesting to, to, um, to see uh, looking back how yeah, wrong really like, we all were. Yeah, about how... No, I'm not say it. this movie was gonna be. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, Pixar's we'll... not doing any more sequels after this one, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. All right, but now we should probably mention the not elephant in the room because what we're talking about is technically small, but also the the two f- key factors that go with Toy Story three that you wanted to mention. Okay, so uh, the first off, I just wanted to, men- to try to uh, get really quick into the history of this because we, we still have to talk uh, well into this, but similar to Toy Story 2, this was going to be a uh, direct-to-DVD film. The, the only problem was this was going to be a direct-to-DVD film made out of spite. Because at the time, Pixar was on the way to split from Disney and work solo. And Michael, Michael Eisner, the, the then CEO, said, okay, fine. It, it turned out that in the, in the original contract that they had, there's a stipulation. First off, Disney had the complete rights to Toy Story, characters and all. And they had the rights to make sequels to Pixar films without Pixar's say. They can, they can join in if, if they want to, but they don't have to. Uh, this, of course, uh, became like a, a big point of frustration. Um, the unnamed director uh, was quoted as saying, these were the people who put out Cinderella 2. 
they knew this was going to be bad news bears, but um, I, Michael Eisner went ahead with it anyway, set up a, a brand new company, uh, a brand new production arm called Circle 7 that, w- that was going to be making exclusively uh, Pixar direct dvd They had Toy Story 3, they had Finding Nemo 2, and they had Monsters Incorporated 2. The latter of which we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll definitely get to talk about later on in the, in the podcast series. Toy Story 3, there was actually two different uh, pitches that I'll try to... The first one was going to be that the toys get sent to Andy's grandma's attic and they were going to meet a couple new toys and then the rest of the movie was going to be a whodunit mystery film. Dumb. And then the other one was that there's going to be a massive recall of Buzz Lightyear action figures and Buzz would have to be sent back to Taiwan. So the toy gang ended up uh, shipping themselves over to Taiwan and having uh, Taiwanese adventures. Needless to say, this was not going to be, this was not going to be a, a very good... <laughs> it wasn't there- going to be a good film. It wasn't gonna Not, be good. Neither of them sounded like good ideas, but it is interesting to see which of the ideas made it into the final, the final product. And and the thing is, um, officially, uh, Lee Unquist, the director of this, set, uh, said that they restarted completely from scratch without looking at any of the scripts or the original con uh, or any of the uh, concept art, which is suspect. Because I believe in the in the Buzz Light in, in the Taiwan pitch, it was going to end in a junkyard. It's a bit coincidental, but the word is this was a they they went on a blank slate. <laughs> so we're just gonna have to take their word on this. We'll, we'll, we'll go we'll, we'll go with that for now. Yeah, we'll go with that for now. We'll go but, with that for now. Yeah. Either but way, that, that's kind of the 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 oddity of Toy Story three. And then once they once once they finally like uh, Disney and Pixar uh, got back together, they closed the shop, and most of the animators in Circle Seven ended up uh, uh, getting uh, put into other Disney arms and. We, we we don't hear anything from this again. They didn't even they, they got as far as like writing the script, but nothing was ever produced. So we don't we're not gonna have a Good. lost tape of Toy Story Three. And this isn't the only thing that this isn't the only thing that was um <laughs> uh, happened during that time. Well These weren't the only ideas that didn't see the light of day. Ooh yeah, and unfortunately, I'm I, I would have to talk about it in either this or during Brave because in both films they have a newt in both films a, as an Easter egg, and that's because one of the uh, projects that they that they had lined up for 2000 this was it was going to be right after Toy Story 3 was a film called Newt, and the premise was going to be that it was a um, the last two um, specimens of a of a near extinct uh, newt species that that had to fall in love and yet they can't stand each other and the and it's all the hijinks uh, surrounding that. This was going to be directed by Gary Rydstrom, who was a sound designer for Pixar and he also uh, was a director of the short Lifted, which I love. I love that short a lot. And Gary Rydstrom himself is extremely funny. <laughs> and he en- and they they were working on it for some time, trying to get it, and then they ca- then they delayed it to After Cars Two, and then it turns out that Brave took that spot. And then the, the Disney archivist sent an email that said, this film is canceled. And people are like, oh, oh. And, <laughs> and to this day, Newt is the only um, canceled Pixar film. I don't believe there was, any, there was ever any, um, they, they may be like animation test floating in some, uh, in some hard drive somewhere. All, all we have to work with are concept arts and some little bits from the from the screenplay because it just looked like this wasn't gonna work. Also, I believe Blue Sky Entertainment uh, came out with the film Rio, which is the exact same premise, and yeah, that did only birds. <laughs> yeah. Only with birds. It's kind. Of, it's kind of sad, actually. Yeah. yeah like yeah, they they just said uh, the the official word is that wasn't quite it. But I have a feeling that didn't help. 
Yeah. There's quite a lot of um, sadness with this <laughs> around this around this time. I remember uh, you, Kirby fan, mentioning in the last episode that you that 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 people had considered Toy Story three the uh, the start of the start of the downfall. And at first, it, this I wasn't, could be considered the downfall. Yes, it, it was considered the downfall. And at first, I was like, really? But then I realized that like that's because because like the the what's considered the downfall of this of the the Simpsons like the the episode uh, the principal and the popper it, the episode itself is funny but it it represented a turn yes and 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 that started to bug me and I actually <laughs> worry whether it it bugged me so much as to affect my viewing of the film. I suppose we could talk about that a little down the line. I think now yeah. would be a good time to get started talking about uh, the story and stuff. Yeah, right. I'm not but, doing um, the plot synopsis before, this time. Before somebody does the plot synopsis, random or wash, um, one final thing, not about any of our history. I saved it for after. Uh, I'm glad Wash didn't cover this. There <laughs> is one thing about this film more than any other Pixar. You could ask anybody this question. There is something about this film that is more important than any other Pixar films, even though the ones that have this. Before the film started, I went to YouTube and I pulled up the Toy Story 3 teaser trailer and I watched that before going into the film proper. And let me tell you, it was a very good idea. <laughs> this, this movie, this movie's teaser trailer, it just, it just makes you feel things, especially when you've been going through the movies like we have uh. and you've just been, see, you've been seeing, you know, you start with Toy Story and it's kind of a distant thought for us at this point. We've, se- we've seen Bugs Life, Monsters, Inc., Finding Nemo, The Incredibles, Cars, Wally, Ratatouille, Up. We've seen all these movies, and then just to just it's you got the gang back, and it was it was a nice feeling to see in a teaser it was, trailer. It was very nice. I that's think that was the one they point. played at the Super Bowl. I think so, yeah, because that that was that's like how a, I first found out about it. Yeah, I I think I just saw it online. I don't think I watched it in the Super Bowl, but I I do remember that that uh, teaser trailer very vividly. I think- I think my mom saw him like, hey, there's Toy Story 3. And I'm like, nah, Pixar doesn't do sequels. And then she's like, show me. I'm like, oh my god. I, <laughs> I love that we say they don't do sequels, even though at all points we all know that Toy Story 2 is a thing. Well, well that was an exception okay, of the rule. You know what? I'm but, so glad you mentioned that because that's something I, I, I found out in my research. That uh, part of the reason, could, like Michael Eisner was like really pissed. That uh, that Pixar wasn't uh, w- was very like shy about doing sequels, but the reason for that is that contract that I mentioned before. It was a multi-film contract, but the one of the stipulations was that any sequels don't count towards the se- the contract. So if they had four movies left and they make a sequel, they still had four movies left. So they got screwed over with that contract, and then. And then the the CEO is like, "Well, why aren't you doing it? Why aren't you doing? Why aren't you doing this when we're screwing it over?" <laughs> Gotta love CEOs. All right, so who's gonna right. be? Who's no, gonna be I'm doing not, this? I'm not yeah. doing plot synopsis. I've done it way. I'm already time. my mouth. My mouth is already dry. <laughs> well, oh, yeah, because you talk drier. about the backstory too much. Either way, <laughs> yes, I did. I that's true. I did. So Kirby fan, do you want to do it? Fine, I guess. Um, <laughs> no one wants to talk about it. <laughs> <sighs> Why? The Incredibles, the Incredibles is the one that I wanted to do it for. I didn't really care to do it for any others. But Wash okay. talked a lot. You've done it a lot. I'll, I'll, I'll bite the bullet. Toy Story Three is a film that involves Andy moving on to college. He's about to move on from home. He has not played with his toys in a very long time. The toys try to set up ways to get Andy to play with them, but none of them work. Eventually, they settle for being in the attic and being together having things to do being with the christmas decorations oh boy (laughs) and that was what they were going to be okay with but through a series of misunderstandings the toys think that andy was going to throw them away when in reality he actually was going to put them in the attic except for woody who who he had planned to take with him to college they end up at sunnyside daycare uh which the toys think is going to be great woody tries to convince them otherwise and he can't, which causes them to split ways. The toys staying at Sunnyside, Andy, Woody going back to Andy. And the toys find out that Sunnyside might not be that all they hyped it up to be. So uh, Woody needs to figure out how to get back to Andy so he could be with him for college. And the toys need to 
um, be at Sunnyside Daycare, decide if ultimately it is worth it, and maybe find a way out. And uh, and a big plot follows up after that. Mm-hmm. And yeah, yes, indeed. So, what should we start talk about first? I, I guess we can start at the start because what a start! Oh, that oh. was one. Speaking of openings with no video. Literally last video is complaining about how they all started the same. And then this one, this one just said, yeah, the way that all the previous movies pretty much have been starting. Nah, we're going (laughs) to have something way better. Literally what I was asking for last time was just something more imaginative. And that is exactly what we got. (laughs) I mean, technically it is Toy Story 1's opening mixed with some Toy Story 2 elements of an opening in there. But it's redone. To like yeah, a, with exactly. great it's given, imagination. It's, it's fresh. It, the it, opening was one hell of a ride and probably the best way the, the best way to open up the film. It, it was what a kid imagines his adventures to be. <laughs> it's like yeah. the, the biggest, grandest, like coolest thing ever from an adult. It's completely nonsensical. But yeah. he just he's just having a blast all the way through. <laughs> I really I really like that when it had transitioned from it being what what the kid thinks it is to what it actually is, which is just the kid playing with his toys. Yeah. It doesn't really feel any different. It still it has the same feeling to it. Only now you're hearing Andy shout, Bush, shoot my badge, what I'll kill you, do it. Uh. <laughs> it's it's not Woody and Buzz saying it anymore, but it feel it doesn't feel any different from what we were just watching. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Like they just, just it works. It's such a great opening. It it really helped that they um they they got the the guy who does the action for the Incredibles to do the opening for for Toy Story three. Uh, Mark yeah. And, Mark Andrews, who we'll get to talk about uh, later on in the in the series, but he he knocked it out of the park here. Yeah, it was, and I just I still one of my best viewing moments in the theater is seeing that opening for the first time. That opening was designed to hook you in, especially if you grew up with Toy Story 1. Uh, yeah, especially when it gets to a point where you can actually like quote alongside it, even if you've seen it for the first time, because it's like, well, I brought my dinosaur who eats voice film talks. <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, they literally quote moments of the film. They they <laughs> they do, and like you said, it's uh, it's elements of Toy Story and Toy Story Two because you have a uh, you have One Eye Bart and you have a uh, uh, Evil Doctor Pork Shops, um, and yeah, they just have a they just have a ball with it. <laughs> and then it 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 transitions to video footage of Andy playing it from uh, from his mom's perspective. From home videos, like if we were on a camera too. Yeah, like it was actually something you would see in the '90s. Yeah, exactly, and that 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 part especially hit, hit close to me because, like, in between the um when I first to- I seen Toy Story three and now, my dad found some old um VHS tapes of some old home videos, and we actually went through the process of transferring them to digital. So I got to relive all the experiences, and it's like. Oh my God! It, and, and watching it through Toy Story uh, three, I I got it. I got that experience of like seeing the home videos, and it's like that's me. I don't remember it, but yeah, I think I probably would have done that. You see, <laughs> I had a I had a similar experience because yeah. my sister. Or either me or my sister is a no. My sister is a frequent watcher of home videos of our childhood Mm. and she would just pop them in every once in a while just to get a good laugh and i'm used to seeing home videos all the time because he would i would just watch him and be like oh my god that's me and so (laughs) when i saw that i felt something very very similar yeah and just the whole thing that combined with the fact that i'm watching a movie the first long anticipated long long anticipated sequel for a movie that came out since my childhood nostalgia just and, was overflowing, and, and and at the same time as the as as you go through all this VHS um, montage, you get Randy Newman singing, and oh, man, I oh man, did I at miss least, it? <laughs> at least they cut. At least they cut off early. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a that friendship will never die. die. That, that was bone chilling. It's effective, but also it's Randy Newman. <laughs> yeah, but it's nostalgia. But at the same time, all right, it's okay. Nostalgia. All right, we're, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to save the nostalgia rant for later. But I'm 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 joining you on this one, honestly. 
I, I, we'll, I we'll save it for a later though we'll save it for later yeah. but it's building trust me yes um <laughs> uh um but yeah it, it is kind of sad just to see like how the toys have like lessened because you in the beginning you see like so many different toys yeah and yeah. how many and how all sorts of them and then by the end there's only just like the main as main of the care cast as you can get yeah like, i'm surprised yeah. i'm surprised the little green men were still around honestly but <laughs> to, the de- to the detriment of the film they were still around yeah yeah the they they came in handy, but um, <laughs> but yeah, we lost a lot of characters. Even Bo, that that Bo scene was very funny, actually. Honestly, I, honestly, I, I okay. So the thing for the for I want to say for the first twenty minutes of the movie, I I was it was really emotional. Yeah. But then when Bo Peep was just so casually mentioned, then Woody just goes, "Yeah, even Bo," and then moves on. Yeah. I left. I left. Well, I laughed too, but only because of the Toy Story 4. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Gotta remember, I, we haven't seen it yet. Uh. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't laugh, but I also wasn't as affected as I think I was when I had first seen it. Oh, yeah, no, no. It wasn't nearly as effective. Yeah. Like, but, like especially because of Toy Story 4. Because last time I was like, oh, Bo's gone. Yeah, she's, yeah. It was she's, like, she's like, gone. That's it. That's it. She's just like uh what is what is love is gone and well then we got another movie coming up yeah that the, eh, that's a big problem <laughs> but um, we'll, we'll see whether it's a problem or not yeah it's uh, it's not no. directly a problem with toy story 3 because there is no way one there's no way toy story 3 could have known what toy story 4 would have done yes. but also in the movie bo doesn't show up yeah right that's right. that's good and then yeah it's just i feel like we could talk about the characters but there's not much to add for them that we didn't already see in the previous two. Yeah, honestly. The, the, only I don't thing, know how I f- the only thing I can really add is that Mr. Potato Head is still a dick. <laughs> but he's a lovable one. <laughs> he's a, he's a he's lovable one. He's funny. So, I, okay, no, no, this is always a point about Toy Story 3 that I've always found super interesting. You look at Toy Story 1, and he's very antagonistic towards Woody. Yes. And you look at Toy Story 2, and he goes to... He goes to rescue Woody, but a big reason is just because everybody else is going along. But he's at least grown on Woody that much. You know, he started to. Yeah. By the time Toy Story 3 comes around, when Woody says that he's going to leave and go back to Andy when they want to stay at Sunnyside, all the other toys are saying, Woody, stay, Woody, stay. And even Mr. Potato Head saying, come on, Woody, stay with us. To the point where he actually has grown fond enough of Woody to want him to be around. Yeah, Mr. Potato Head has grown a lot since Toy Story, and yeah. he's become lot less of a jerk. I mean, yes, he still has his moments. He still has his moments, he's, he's still a big he's, jerk, but he's a likable jerk. He, he still he way. still refuses to admit that he's that he was wrong. Jesse's right, Woody. She was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed at that line too. Everybody um, did, I think. Do yeah, you're right? There isn't really much to say that's different character wise from what we discussed before. Woody's still the lovable leader. Buzz is. I feel like Buzz is more humble. Yeah, a this lot time more around, I, I did. I did really like the, the 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 general conflict of the movie being either siding with Andy or siding with. I don't want to say your job, but siding with Andy and siding with their happiness. Yeah, uh, I, I liked that conflict, and I especially liked that for Buzz. It was really it was really hard for him to make a choice. He was oh, he was yeah. the middleman for a while until he had to make a decision, and yeah. that's when he ultimately decided, "I'm going to stay here." And, ooh, and was, because was, th- because this was what was best. I mean, at least at the time, this is what was best for everyone. Yes, yes, yeah. But none of them had any idea. I would say maybe. I mean, other than just like mentioning some like quippets like that, maybe we should just stri- go straight to the new characters because there's a yeah, decent amount. I, I feel I feel like that's uh, the best way to go around it. Yeah, because yeah. again, the characters are lovable, never ever, or they haven't really changed much. Yeah. Um, there, I, I, there's one thing I want to say about the group of characters in general, but I'll save that for after we mention the new characters. Okay. Well, I guess we can talk about one that's it's technically it's technically not new, but we we don't get nearly as much characterization this time. Barbie. Yes, Barbie was amazing in this movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, she got a cameo in Toy Story 2. She got a role in Toy Story 3. Yeah, I, I will. I hate, I hate to put it this way, but I'll say this. I agree. I loved Barbie, but 
She was not the best Barbie doll in the film. Oh, no. No, not without, without a doubt, no. <laughs> but, wait, what are you saying about Ken? <laughs> I am saying that Ken is far and away the best new character of the film. That is well, yes. Oh, no, no. I yes. thought you were saying that, that Ken was a Barbie doll. Uh, he is a Barbie doll. <laughs> I'm not a girl's, a girl's boy. boy. Why does everyone say that? <laughs> Why does anyone keep saying that? <laughs> Oh my god! I, I, I want to talk about Barbie first, then I'll then yeah, I'll no, gush no, no, about Ken later. Because I agree, Barbie yeah, is Barbie as far, is as, far like, as the new characters go. Barbie is also even, top tier. So yeah, Barbie is great. She starts out like she starts out like her world like shaken as Molly just throws her like a piece of garbage. Yeah. Because yeah. fun fact, Molly like uh, originally I think they were like and they mentioned in the director's commentary. Sorry, it's like okay, if if Andy has a little sister, why doesn't the kids, the toys just go to them? What's the problem? But they made, I made Molly mature a lot, and they, to like more than Andy, to where she doesn't even pay attention to toys anymore. Yeah. And that's one, that solved that, because cause you see Molly, she's like a preteen, but she's like trying to be, yeah, to she, be older. Yeah, she's a tween. She has a tween magazine, and yeah. and she's just listening on her iPod. That was a thing, uh, young people of today. We used to listen to, uh, we used to download music on yeah, uh, onto boxes, iTunes. and then and, and you to wouldn't it. you wouldn't scroll through the screen by touching it. You had a thing on the iPod that you had to rotate. Yeah, 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 exactly. You had one button. Really. You had to wait for the eye touch for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was such a big deal. It was called the eye touch. That's how big of a deal it was. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, ah, two thousand seven. Yeah, but yeah, you see Barbie. Um, you see Barbie like go through a lot, and then she meets Ken. The one thing I like about Barbie is that like she has, she is a good character, and she's loyal too. Because when she sees what happens to. Um, uh, her friends and Sunnyside. She she doesn't like stand back and watch. Mm-hmm. She she joins them. She literally like she rips the ascot off of <laughs> of Ken and is, and How? like and, and and just like sits on sits stands in the cell, crossing her arms and like ready to stand by her friend's side. That is awesome. Yeah, and she does a lot of cool things in this Even, and. And then by uh, the by the end of it, like she even she has like one of the one of the uh, the the best lines towards the end, where, where like they I mean spoilers they they attack uh, Lotso as a bully and 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 Barbie says Jesse's right, authority should derive from the consent of the governed, not from the threat of force. And Mr. Potato Head and and uh, Ham just shrug. I mean she's right. It's, oh, she's right. it's yeah. such a great, great line. <laughs> it, it breaks all the stereotypical Barbie tropes, and I love that. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah so and they, but but they don't they don't go too they don't go too far. She is still a Barbie girl. A Barbie girl. She's she she's not like a she likes like a clothes. badass marine. Yeah, she likes clothes. She likes shopping. She yeah. wants to live in a dream house with Ken. It's, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It, all right. I, I gotta bring it up. There is one person who likes clothes more than Barbie. Ken, Look, Michael Keaton. How did do you such not? How do you not love Ken? He's just—he's he's the most likable perfect. new character he's so by far. Funny. He's hilarious. His timing is great. I almost said facial expressions, but like his movements are just perfect. One, <laughs> one of the funniest parts of the entire movie is when Barbie is threatening Ken, and she's threatening him by ripping his clothes. <laughs> and you can just hear it in his—you can see on his face, and you can hear in his voice just how panicked and desperate he is for her to stop no Barbie not the those, are, vi- <laughs> those are vintage <laughs> <laughs> that scene you guys brought up before when uh, Jesse called Lotto out on being a bully Ken specifically says Sunnyside can what was it, it was um, can be cool and groovy if we can. it can be cool and groovy <laughs> <laughs> and Michael Keaton like plays it a hundred percent. I and I, yeah. I love. Yeah, he's I love not, that he's not playing the character ironically. He's fully into it. <laughs> yeah, he's fully into it. I also, even, Ken uh, isn't uh, himself isn't that bad of a guy. He's just kind of got caught up in this mess and following orders. That's how it seemed like to me. Because even like when he was going to Barbie, he's like, "Things are complicated around here. You got to do what I say." <laughs> like he's saying that, not like empowering. He's saying that just like, "Yo, I." want you around but you got to be careful here yeah yeah and then and then well he paid for that yeah <laughs> i even he lost, did it, did it he not lost really, clothes huh 
This is not even. This, this is not really about the character, but I, I I especially love how the how Ken's like dream house, the elevator is like really poorly mechan mechanical, and it's just like it's not at the least bit smooth. <laughs> oh, it's just like the toys. It's exactly yeah, like the yeah. toys. Like and I'm I, pretty sure my sister used to own a dream house just like that. And I'm like, oh my god. I love that detail. It's such a tiny detail, but it adds it. I feel like it adds a lot to to the to the character and the introduction of Ken. I'd been yeah. like, I'd been like so into this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who's ready for Ken's dream tour? <laughs> oh, it's so good! It's so good. <laughs> Ken's one of our favorite new characters by yeah. far. I did. Um, I did not like the. I remember one of the one of the few complaints I had about Toy Story Three when uh, Ken and Barbie first met. They 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 have the. Um, I like your leg warmer. Nice ass, Scott. And then there was a record scratch, and I hated that record scratch. Yeah, I mean it's cheesy, it's and I cheesy. did roll my eyes when I saw it again. But yeah, yeah, know. another thing. It's not. I, I I'm not as ba- bothered with it nowadays as I. As, as I was, especially like Toy Story had the cheesiest ending, and I love it. It's like yeah. even cheesier than the record scratch, but it, it's it's. Fine. I'm not a fan of the record scratch cliche, but fine. Uh, I guess speaking of fine, what about <laughs> a lot of the other new characters? The uh, f- do we want to talk about one in particular, or do we want to talk about the others before we talk? We want to talk about the strawberry, strawberry scented, scented the strawberry yeah. scented elephant in the room. Yeah. I um, can't believe Toy Story three made history. Not not because of sales, not because of nostalgia. It had. A twist villain, and then they had the same twist villain again. He was a twist villain twice. Yeah. And it was equally stupid both times. <laughs> I, I don't know. I kind of like... Well, okay. No, no, no. Okay. All right. All right. I'll concede to that. The second time was a lot stupider than the first. Yeah. I, but yeah, neither I, of them I was particularly crazy about. I will say, I like Lotso a lot, but I found at least Lotso interesting because for a couple of reasons one he's a twist villain but it happens within the middle of the film no, no not even like it happened at the uh, right after the first act like the, yeah it, it, if uh, anything he's not really i wouldn't even argue he's a twist villain because a twist villain more happens in the third half this yeah this happened he, like beginning of the second half he, he was as much of, the, of a twist villain that syndrome was like yeah he, pretty much he, he was showing up at around the same time at least for uh, for syndrome you didn't care so much for buddy and then he and then he comes back and then he's he's like a nerdy asshole <laughs> yeah <laughs> um with lasso i don't know it he's, was just a switch it's maybe just how i'm interpreting it but like the way he talks and just how he like addresses people it came across as a lot more manipulative than before i i suppose it's just but it just felt like it was more leaning on the especially his i i, I wish i actually uh looked up who the voice of, of lasso um but it's, he he did a southern drawl yeah. Doing this and that and that would like lean in way into that sort of cliche as like the humble little southerner with the dark secret. Yeah. So here's 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 my thing. When when I was listening to Lotso talk, it really did just kind of feel like he was going through all the lines of dialogue that someone who's so obviously not as nice as they seem. But even even then, you say things, you know, along the lines of "Oh, but he's manipulative." He's still really it's still clearly obvious that he's the twist villain and i can't believe i'm bringing this up as a compliment it's the only time that i will but at least on first viewing the prospector is a surprise yeah i don't know i kind of don't mind the fact that he's not i mean that he's a twist villain again i kind of like him more than the prospector one because he gets a backstory at least well a backstory that very is very eerily similar to woody and in toy story one only it came turned out for the worse uh like months was with up lotso is woody corrupted right yes that that's a very that's a very good point this is probably just uh issue i have with sequels relying on older movies for plot important points but up as as much as i wasn't crazy about months uh, oh you know what i mean by that watch the episode if you don't know what i mean by that. (laughs) at least you know everything you needed to know about both carl and months you could find out from up this now, obviously, it's Toy Story 3. You should have watched 1 and 2. But also, 
if, if you haven't watched Toy Story 1 in a while and you remember bits and pieces of it, and now Toy Story 3 is expecting you to remember this thing from the first movie that you might not even remember, and the movie itself doesn't really do a good job of bringing it up. I don't know. I just, I, I, I respect your opinion on Lotso, but I like... I don't know. I just maybe it's because I like the south, the twisted southern drawl idea. But yeah, just, the, I Ned, don't know. I just I Ned, just Ned like Beatty, Ned Beatty did okay, um, in his performance. But I, I think I'm on I'm on Kirby's side with this, especially because like at least at least with Toy Story two, you don't necessarily have to have watched Toy Story one to follow along. Do you? Not really. The only thing you're missing is callbacks. The the yeah. callbacks, but it's it's not like you need. That's all to you're have... missing, though. It's nothing like pl- it's nothing plot important. Technically, when they first went to Sunnyside, every character that they saw, they thought was a good person, and then they turned out to be villains. So you could put forth the argument that Ken kind of falls in that category too. You can... m- he is a much more fun villain, both on the surprise side and on the being a villain. And he doesn't even turn full antagonist by the end. So yeah, exactly. He's. Not that I want to call him a twist villain just because it doesn't feel right, but that's kind of... He, he's a twist villain with a redemption arc, which I don't think we have. If anything, maybe Mirage? Oh, yeah, there's maybe. Mirage. Mirage did have yeah. a redemption... That, that's a good point. That is a valid point. If anything. But even then, Ken was done ten times better. Yeah, yeah Ken was done way better. <laughs> Mirage <laughs> is the one thing about The Incredibles that I'm not crazy about. Yeah, yeah. Maybe because I just like the idea of Toy Story being a three being a great prison movie. And <laughs> it's just... I like the idea of Lotso as a prison warden and that's probably why i have a soft spot for him as a villain i think he's i I just think what he's how he's done his villainous villainous actions and how he's put on the facade i just like a lot i think it like that's why i like him better than the prospector just because of what he's done and just how he has influenced sunnyside and turned it into like a prison I, i can at least be more entertained by him than by the prospector yeah and i think this is where uh me and the two of you, or the two of you and I, are going to have a big disagreement. I do not like the direction the movie took when it became a prison film. Toy Story 3 starts out as a very colorful movie. Yes, it does. When they get into the prison, there are no colors. There are dark There are dark browns and grays. Those are the only colors for about 70% of the movie. Yeah. It is ugly. It is straight up ugly. We just got finished with Up, which had some of the best use of colors, some of the most vibrant Toy Story 3, for 70% of it, I think is an ugly movie. It is entirely because the movie is trying to put on this kind of tone. And I appreciate that they're going for that, given that that's what the movie is trying to be. Yeah. That doesn't make it good, in my opinion. Doesn't mean I have to like it would probably be the best way to say it. Yeah, Leon Quitz is is a huge fan of The Shining. And you you can definitely tell this is where he got the inspiration from. He's in, like... This sort of ugliness to, uh, for horror. It's just that that at least works in a horror film. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what what really is unfortunate to me, at least, is just that at the beginning of the movie, especially that opening sequence, the use of colors is so good. Oh, yes. You, you do bring up a good point. You do. I will say... Maybe just because I'm a fan of darker things, like I'm, I'm a fan of Lee Unkrich's tastes, and I like the lighting a lot in certain scenes. Like oh, there's yes. one scene where Buzz enters a vending machine, which is treated like a casino, and it's probably <laughs> my favorite shot in the whole movie. Just oh, the yes. whole, just the, all the villainous ba- baddies, including Ken, <laughs> <laughs> just gambling like Barbie special, mar- ga- gambling uh, Monopoly money and batteries with one of those like. Uh, farm yeah. animal noise thing. That was, that, was great, really, that was really creative. That was really it's creative. So creative. Such a great shot. Great scene. And you get to see, I guess, the villains of the. I guess the guards of Sunnyside have. Uh, They're the lackeys. Like, interact with each other. The lackeys of Sunnyside interact yeah. with each other. Which, by the way, I like the designs of, some of them. I do lot. too. And, but yeah, they're, they're, they are good toys. Yeah, because you have like you even have like some big names. You have Whoopi Goldberg as the octopus. You do, you do. Yeah. Which I did not remember until now, and you know why I didn't remember that? Because they weren't developed well. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And neither. That's a, that's a complaint I have with Toy Story in general. I will say it has a lot of characters, but a lot of them, including some of the main cast from one and two, are underdeveloped and underused. 
Yeah. I, I, I'm not going to say it's directly because it's a prison kind of escape movie. That's not the reason why nobody gets developed. It doesn't directly have to do with that. No. But when you kind of start thinking about a lot of the reasons of, oh, why aren't these characters develop? A lot of them do, for me at least, I did eventually reach the conclusion that it's just, that's the kind of movie it is. Toy Story 1 was a very personable movie. It was Woody versus Buzz. This guy's an idiot, and this idiot thinks that this idiot's going to take over. It was a very personable, so it allowed a lot of, at least, a lot of growth for Woody and Buzz. Nobody else, but at least those two. Toy Story 2 is about is a very centralized conflict within Woody. What's more important? Making Andy happy or making himself happy? Yeah. And all the other toys, they might not go through some development, but at least they provide nonstop laughs. So, yeah. fine. Toy Story 3, a lot of the movie is about being at Sunnyside, and you don't develop there. Maybe if a lot more of the movie was was about the whole thing where new toys are with the babies, and when the toys do their time, they get to move on to the older kids, or the, the, the kids, not the babies. If, if more of it was about that, and it was more of the characters kind of thinking about why that makes sense or why that's wrong, we could have seen more development in that regard, but instead it's just immediately painted as black and white. This is wrong. So nobody really gets to go through anything. I think the the bigger source of the problem is just that the cast has grown so much more uh, than it did between Toy Story 1 and Toy Story 2. Because Toy Story yes, 2, yeah. you really had, you can't, I mean, you had Zerg, but he, he was just more like a comical, he, he was more yeah. like a joke. He was a gag, yeah. really. You only had, you only had Jesse and, uh, and the Prospector and Bullseye, and you get to spend quite a lot of time with them, and you get to, to, to see what, what they go through. And, and yeah, you switch between um Andy's toys looking for him, but that's only five pe- five toys. Buzz, yeah. Mr. Potato Head, Slinky, Ham, and Rex. And yeah. you switch between the two and they each get their chance to develop. Yeah, and it and it also allowed for the jokes with the five of them to be much much more defined and funny. It seems like everyone was either A, trying to do something that's important to the plot, whether it be like actually like lead the team like Woody. Or, a lot of times, get one place to another, Slinky and Bullseye. Or, they were str- struggling to maybe get one joke in if they were lucky. Yeah. Like, Bullseye, good lord. But like, like I, I thought Bullseye was a weak uh, dog character in the second movie. Here, he did nothing. He only he has actually one did defining moment in the film. And that's when he follows Woody, and Woody's like, no, you stay. And that could have been nice to, like, maybe have Bullseye there with Woody and just, like, give him something to work with. But no, he's like, I don't want you alone in the attic. You stay with the others. You join the mass of characters because we can't, right, interview you individually. I, I, I can I at least appreciate that, but that's just more for Woody's side. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. give me any appreciation for Bullseye because Bullseye is useless. He's a vehicle. He's a vehicle. He's a vehicle for the aliens. Woody doesn't even really grow all that much. He no. goes from we have to stick with Andy to we'll stick together. The only way, yeah, the only way you could easily interpret that as growing is that like he lets he decides like to get make it so that the other toys are happy instead of them uh, them all going to the attic. This really is just a movie where things happen. <laughs> and it's a movie that relies I'm gonna say it uh, wait is there anything else I should say about like the characters and stuff oh yeah Richard Kind's in this movie I f- keep forgetting that he's the bookworm oh oh, oh. okay uh, I, yeah, I, Bing, I have, Bing Bong's I have, the bookworm I have a problem with the bookworm that winds up extending into a lot of the rest of the movie but I will bring that up later it is not what you are about to say okay <laughs> I will say that one big problem I've had with the movie and I wasn't it wasn't a problem when I first saw it because I was blinded by it, but it relies way too much on nostalgia. Mm. Fully agree. Yeah. Like, it was never more evident than with this film. <laughs> yeah. Like, when I watched it there, I was like, it's too much on nostalgia. Too much. This is when I was starting to see what you what, what people have been saying, that this was the start of the downfall. Yeah. It didn't... It. it I, I would still say this is fine. I still, yeah, it's still I was, fine. I enjoyed this, but it it started to grade on me a bit. 
Or, or at least it, it, it didn't affect me nearly as much as it used to. It ended up making me feel like disassociated with the film. The thing about Toy Story 2, why it gets away with its nostalgia callback so much better, we've actually already went over this point. Toy Story 2 does not make you watch Toy Story 1 in order to understand it. Right. All these are are fun little nods to the first movie. That's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Even if... Not not that... Well, uh, never mind. I'm going to drop that thought. But Toy Story 3, you, you pretty much got to see the first two movies to understand a lot of what's going on and get... Well, maybe not that, that bad, but especially to understand a lot of the deeper meanings that the movie wants to go for. If you missed out on Toy Story 1 and 2... You're going to you? be confused at some parts of the movie. Oh, why, yeah, without a why, doubt. Why are people saying this is such a good part of the film when if you don't watch the first two, do you even get it? I have a, I have a story uh, for this. It's, it's somebody else's story. But earlier today, I was talking with a co-worker. I brought up that I had just seen Toy Story 3. And he told me the story that uh, in the theater he, he went to, there was a dad with his kids and at the at the ending where, where the uh, Andy gives away the 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 toys, the kids who were uh, in his guess around like ten or so, they were like, "Oh, that's kind of sad." And the dad, who was in his like mid or late late thirties, was audibly bawling. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, to be honest, we all were. That is kind of a microcosm of what of. of of what happened here and it's how it's how we all got swept away with this unfortunately it's good for the time but when you look back it 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 doesn't have staying power yeah it doesn't it really doesn't it's and... so sad because it's still fine I, I still had some fun with it it didn't feel yeah it didn't feel long for me it, it kind of felt long for me at points uh, a, a little long uh a the little, beginning the beginning little. wasn't so bad but once around the time Lotso and the other and the other toys left around that for the first time when they found out Sunnyside was not all it was hyped up to be. Maybe even around the time they got to Sunnyside, I don't know. Around that point is where it kind of started dragging a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a never, little and it, bit. And it never really recovered from there. I, I think oh. it, I think it might have dragged when uh, they were at the dumpster. Not not when they were at the uh, the dump, but when they were at the dumpster and they were confronting Lotso. And they were just going through this whole thing of, of like, trying to uh, call him out while he just had this smug uh, face and tries Where's to... Where's your kid now, Sheriff? Well, that's, that's, that's in the dump. <laughs> oh, okay, never mind. I mean, I like the fact that everyone sees lots of bull. Like, and how... Eventually, like, yeah, but... Eventually. But, yeah, they still committed these horrible acts and toys are dead. Yeah. Actually, you know what? We we we've talked a lot about Sunnyside, but there is one more. Yeah, group I was of gonna mention. I want. Yeah, I wanted to mention this. And speaking of other underdeveloped characters, Bonnie's house. Uh, I like Trixie. I wasn't I like- crazy about Trixie, but um. Mr. Pricklepants is my spirit animal. (laughs) Or at least he was back in high school. (laughs) I'm trying to stay in character. Are you classically trained? (laughs) All right, so... God bless Timothy Dalton. (laughs) I think we all just have one character from them that we really liked. Um, Mine was Buttercup the Unicorn. I just liked how... I just liked how chilly was. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I'll I'll say this, I guess. I did like... like, uh, Oh, God. I liked her. What was her name? Dolly? No, the kid. Oh, uh, Bonnie. Bonnie, right? Bonnie? Yeah, I will say yeah. Bonnie's toys were a breath of fresh air in the film that relied on nostalgia. And Yeah, but they're nice. there for five minutes. Yeah. Uh, and that's yeah. it. Yeah. I'm they don't get much screen time. And I hope, I hope if there's anything Toy Story 4 does right, is that they develop those characters a little bit and give them that, some that more would, That would be time. really nice. That would be really nice. Because they were great to see during, like, the Toy Story short. With yeah, that, 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 that's kind of been my main takeaway, is that the best thing is has is that it just becomes, like, a send-off for a, very, for a much smaller sort of franchise because you have, you have the, the Toy Story uh, shorts and you have the... I believe there was both a Halloween special and a Christmas special. I definitely there saw was, the Christmas special. Yeah, I remember the Christmas special dinosaurs one before. I think there was like sto- a to- Toy Story that time forgot. Oh god, they would not stop playing that on ABC Family. But we're not talking about Time Forgotten. That may be a bonus episode in itself. <laughs> but <laughs> we'll um, so you know what's really weird, considering that this is a movie entirely rooted in nostalgia. 
Yeah. If you were to watch Toy Story 1 and Toy Story 2, and you were to be asked what you wanted to make Toy Story 3, who in their right mind would say a prison movie? <laughs> yeah. Ending aside, and even with the ending, we, we should get to that soon, I don't really feel like you satisfy either camp. I mean, if you think about it, Toy Story 1's a buddy-buddy movie. Ro- a buddy-buddy get-back-home movie. Toy Story 2 is a rescue mission movie about self dis- and also a movie about like identif- self identity and like discovering where you belong and what happens at after like you grow up when a child grows up. But yeah, those are sound better than a prison movie, jeez. It, it, it was a prison <laughs> movie that was going through the same themes as Toy Story 2. Only now we get to actually see them instead of talk about them. Oh. <laughs> I mean yeah, yeah, there, okay. there was even a line where, where uh, it said, "Guys, we all knew this day was coming," and Ham said, "Yeah, but now it's here." No, it's here. <laughs> <laughs> Which I liked. I I, I liked yeah, that yeah. little line. Yeah, John was Ratzenberger was great. Uh, yeah. John Rickles, rest in peace, was great. Yeah. John Ratzenberger is a legend. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Don, Don Rickles, uh, rest in peace. Um, seven. Uh, d- yeah. Wallace Shawn was fantastic. Mm-hmm. All right. Um. I think I'm going to have to make Pixar Spective History again, just because I feel like we're going to have a lot to say about the ending, and we yeah. don't have that much time. I'm not going to give it the 20 minutes or whatever I gave up, but uh, <laughs> I, I say I'm going to give us five extra minutes to talk about the ending. I think that's fair. Okay. Yeah. I see it. So. I didn't cry. I did. I didn't. I didn't. So what did I, we think? What did we think about the ending? Did we like it? It was Okay. I kind of thought it was a bit hokey at points. I, I thought it was super hokey. <laughs> I I I cried, and and then after I cried, I I don't know if I, if I felt guilty about it, but I was like, this isn't the cry that I had before. <laughs> the scene where Andy's mom finally realizes that like uh like Andy really is going away to college. That was when my heart first started like fluttering. That that, that yeah, part that. made me cry. That that part that part, that part almost made me cry. That that actually hurt, especially since at one point my mom w- yes. came home and she started watching me right next to me, and then I was like, "Oh fuck, don't cry, <laughs> god damn it." Yeah, yeah. Censor I, that, I, please. But, but yes. Yeah, that, but that's the thing. That's that's because it hurts us directly. Yeah. And then the the ending of it. <sighs> All right. So for a toy like Buzz Lightyear, I can understand why he would go into detail about Buzz because Buzz has a defined backstory and he's talking to a kid. He wants to get her excited. But if you're going to pull out a piggy bank and start talking about how he's the evil Dr. Porkchop, he'll hold your money, but he's also super evil. What, what, what kind of college student would say that? Yeah, it, Unless that you're was specifically a, that going was... to college to deal with kids. What kind of college student would say that? I will defend mm-hmm. that, that this might, this might just be me personally, but I have definitely talked with kids like that. Like, like, uh, I, I at have that like, age, though. I, at that age, I, I, how old I, is Bonnie? I, I when I was when, like with, when I uh, talking with my my little cousins, I was being like extra goofy just to try to get at their wave level. Yeah, I've done that with my nephew at points, and that was what I saw. So that's my that's my defense of uh, of of Andy. I think it's just specifically Andy. That yeah. it, it's just I, how he. That, that that's I think that's just the point because we've talked about this off camera for hours I, i'm gonna say so i think it's a point we can agree to disagree on andy driving away looking at the toys and saying thanks guys come on come i on. wasn't even yeah. i wasn't even looking at my the, the, the video when that happened i think i was asking my mom what's for dinner <laughs> no no because there's a couple reasons why this doesn't affect me anymore one it's gotten a lot hokier and I was even, and even I have a, I have a three-year-old nephew who I like talk up my toy, my old toys. Like I even gave him my Splatoon amiibo, and Aww, I even I talked, was there for that. I fun, yes, you were there for that. And fun fact, my sister tells me that he literally takes it with him everywhere and sleeps with it every night, and Aww. that's so adorable. <laughs> and um, anyway, I uh. But yeah, I've done stuff like that. I've hooked up toys just to make him feel excited. But that still didn't make me cry. Because a couple reasons. One, I watched the movie so many times when I was in during that whole high school to college phase. Like, I watched it so many times. Just seeing it again, I was like, 
I don't feel like crying. I just don't. And two, again, it was very hokey. It just seemed all cheesy. Like, again, talking about Buzz and Woody makes sense. You're right about that. But some of them, like Little Green Men or Ham or Bullseye, because not really that interesting. They just didn't seem like... They were just there just to try and make you cry or to close out the series. And that leads me to number three, and I'm going to say it now. It affects it for me personally. It may not affect you, but it affects me that this was a way to close off Toy Story as a film franchise, and that is ruined by Toy Story 4 for me. So that definitely didn't help. I don't, if, it, what did, if Toy Story 4 wasn't a thing, I still wouldn't have cried because of the other two reasons, but the fact that Toy Story 4 exists and Toy Story 3 was, that was, that whole ending was treated as a closing moment that made the, ho- that even the hokiness go, oh, at least it's ending. That's what they're doing. They're just sending every character off. That, that didn't help. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that last point specifically, I super, I super drive drive with i i feel like if it had like kept being like the toy story shorts and the tv specials i think it would, it would have been at least a little more effective yes yes i agree yeah, but yeah. what are you gonna do money um, so i i will <laughs> I, money 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 yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I would i would call it mr least... potato head but yeah that works yeah. too <laughs> i will at least defend in this regard the conflict of the movie as i've said multiple times is making andy happy versus making yourself happy that that was a big conflict of the movie and in this resolution they find a way to keep themselves happy and have another a new child to play with and go back to the glory days while also even if it isn't physical having having they're they're with andy forever and they know this. Andy will never forget them. They will never forget Andy. And that is enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love that about this ending. Yeah. It's a lot of the stuff that's around that part, which I think is kind of sort of really dumb. Yeah. I, I remember I remember one of my old defenses of the... Because I remember um, you, Kirby fan... You were, were the first to find out. You were the was, fir- first was, to sign off on the on the ending. And I remember yeah, my, my defense I'm, being like, it wasn't about Andy... It was about the viewer, but that which, doesn't as, help. Which, that as doesn't we've help. Dis- as, as, well, yes, there's that, and also as we've discussed, it only works if you watch Toy Story when you're younger. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's for a very specific demographic now, and it's kind of a little bit ruined by Toy Story Four. Do you think this is poorer than like than like a bush life? Right. I'm not saying like it's so, worse. I'm saying, do you think it is worse? I'd still say no. Yeah, I'm gonna say no on that be, one too. Be, be because okay. at least, at least Toy Story three. I mean, I know we're not talking about quality here, but you know, when a movie has positives, you tend to think it's aged better. <laughs> yeah, at least, at least there's a lot of things that are memorable about Toy Story three, like Ken and Barbie. Sorry, and, Bugs Life fans. Sorry, we gotta we gotta fill our quota. Every God. time, at and, least this one and, came uh, out naturally. All those good dinosaurs. We already we already mentioned good dinosaur kind of, but it's a uh, at least we did it naturally with uh, Bugs Life, and yeah, there's a lot of good things about Toy Story, like the opening, the Ken, Barbie, some of the designs of the toys, even though they get developed. I liked Bonnie's toys a lot. Um, I, well, I Mr. I'll, Potato I'll, Head is funny. I'll say, th- I'll say this on the topic that Wash brought up before, and I'm probably the only one who thinks this, but. The more of a hurry that people get in to do things and get things done, the more we, you know, process information faster and stop really prioritizing the smaller things. I think Cars has aged a lot better than this movie has. Yeah. Damn it. Damn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I that, mean, that, like that, that, my that ranking, free I to think. disagree, and I'm not saying that movie has aged perfectly either. I'm the Cars defender, so I was, you know, obligated <laughs> to bring it up, but... I when when we watched Cars with a Pixar perspective, I, its message really jived. Yeah. Damn it. Okay. All right. Um. Is there anything else we want to talk about with the film? I I just want to say I already mentioned him earlier, but the end credits having a new Randy Newman song. I laughed my ass we off. We belong together. I was, you know what? Out I'll admit this point. out of everything. Hating on Randy Newman made me nostalgic. Yes. 
That's the thing. I, I, it, it probably it didn't affect me as much if if I hadn't gone through all these previous movies. And it's like, it's been so long since we've heard a Randy Newman score. Do you think we'll hear Randy Newman at Toy Story 4? Yes, we will. Definitely. Uh, definitely. This is confirmed. Okay, good. All yeah, right. Yeah. Go um, to see this way. Oh, yeah. oh, wait. There's one thing I forgot to talk about I liked about the film. One thing I hated that this thing was repetitive that they did was bring back manipulated, uh, uh bring back brain, bring back dumb buzz, as I like to call him, where he thinks he's Star Command. Yes. yes. It was annoying. They used yes. it and they made him a vi villain. It was, it's been done to death. Yes. I kind of was annoying. They did it for the plot, whatever. What yes. I'd like that they did to make up for it was Spanish buzz. Yes. Who had a lot of visual humor and comedic timing. Yes. And it was just probably brilliant and i complete can't believe i forgot about that yeah and it was it was it was very refreshing and a nice take on buzz yeah i i, I liked it uh the i especially like how he's a, com a combination of a flamenco dancer and like a spanish soap soap drama character but <laughs> yeah he was he was fine and then and then they just move on yeah it, it was more for like like getting buzz and jesse to finally like fall in love for real that came out of nowhere in my opinion but that's just me. Yeah, same here. Anyway. Right. We have made it to our final thoughts. Uh, which one of you would like to start? Have you started a final thought? I'm, I know, I'm I always say I go last, and then you two always follow it up by saying, no, you don't. And I always follow it up by saying yes. And then we look <laughs> and then, back and we say, oh, the only times you haven't gone last are the times we, that we specifically told you not to go last. So I'm going last. Which one of you two want to go first? <laughs> okay, Toy Story 3. It is definitely... Not I feel so I. owned. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, okay. Slight caveat. I did. I did opt to go first for the Incredibles, but I don't think I need to mention why. Okay. <laughs> go um, ahead. Toy Story three. I used to again as someone who used to praise this film to the highest degree. It did not live up to that. I mean, I said I had it set on a pretty high bar. Like I call it my favorite Pixar movie high bar, and it's definitely not that. Does it have its great moments? Of course. The opening is great. I kind of like the lighting in the film a lot. And I like the designs of the new toys. Even Lotso. I like how he's a furry strawberry scented bear. And he's just... And I like... I like the new characters more than the... Some of the new characters more than the old characters. That's a really weird thought. But like, I like Ken. I like Barbie. Even though she's not new, she's more developed. And I like some of the sunny side guard toy lackey toys and um i just i like bonnie's toys a lot and there's a, some good things about the film but the things that i used to like about it now were basically me just being blinded by nostalgia and the fact that i won just was wanted to see toy story 3 and the fact that it's no longer the closing chapter anymore kind of makes me not enjoy it as much and pull the wool off my eyes that it's not as good as a film as i remember not terrible but still not the best i'm pretty sure i'm in agreement with everything you just said there I, this was uh, this was quite an illuminating watch because it, it it had been a while since i since i had last seen this and it was it was odd like when i was going through like i said up to the ending i was like Oh, this is good. This is good. I wasn't like swept away as I was with Up or or the or the Incredibles or, or Finding Nemo. It, it was odd, like coming coming back to this and it's like, okay, I see it. One of the one of the fun things about about the Toy Story franchise is all the different the, the ways they kind of expand on toys and how human beings treat toys. Um, and I did like some of the like they go into the 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 dynamics of daycare toys there's, there's going to be the ones that are for the the slightly older uh, kids that take better care of the toys and there's going to be the ones for the teen for the toddlers that's going to trash them oh, uh, uh, or we didn't even mention like the um uh during the the prison escape sequence um mr potato has powers get expanded so he can he can control a tortilla i i will give a credit for that that they do uh they, they do find like fresh new ideas trouble is they don't serve well for story for characters it it wasn't it wasn't the the movie i had i had thought it was and i i think i just cried at the ending because i i 
I'm still trying to like like process through because it's I know that it's manipulative, but I I I bought into it. And we it, all kind of did. Yeah, there but but I bought where, into it. Like, there was a time where we bought into it and we loved it, and can't forget that time. It's just not anymore. And it, maybe that's what I might have been crying for. We that it was just kind of it was kind of took me to a very like brief moment in uh, in my in my life, like right at this time in high school. But then I get back to it, and it's 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 fine. It's okay. Kirby fan, please expand on this because I can't yeah. get my words out. <laughs> uh, this one, okay, so not spoilers, but it didn't hurt quite to the degree that A Bug's Life did, but this one hurt not because of the nostalgic memories that I have for it, but at around the 20, 25 minute mark, I was thinking this was going to be one of the greats. This was going to be one of the best. I thought it started really well and it introduced its conflict and its moral dilemmas and its premise it's drama it's action i thought it introduced everything really really well and then once the movie actually started to get going as i said before when it started to drag it it never recovered it it just kept going down i can agree that the lighting in the movie is good i'm just a very big fan of colors myself and seeing all of the colors being diluted grays dark browns ugly browns greens green barf greens <laughs> it, it, it didn't sit well with me i didn't like that i didn't like that as we've said especially random i said this a lot of the older characters they they feel like they're done they're washed up they're <laughs> they're washed up <laughs> they <laughs> have they, they wait what are you saying about me <laughs> <laughs> i'm saying you're like mr potato head yay that's a that's a compliment that is Aww. but i really do not like how nostalgia manipulative your nostalgia it is it is not a movie that can hold on its own two feet you have you have to be nostalgic for it to get the full enjoyment out of it and you can like it without the nostalgia that's fine but to get the full enjoyment out of it not only did you have to watch toy story one and two you have to be nostalgic for toy story one and two and some people can't do that leaving those people out in the dust because because some 40 year old guy cried in a theater that that's not okay <laughs> And there are, there are things about the movie that I didn't like that I didn't get to touch on. I, I really, really do not like how they treat the idea of flamboyant men. That, I didn't like that either. That, oh, yeah. That was horrible. I, I wrote book, that in my uh, notes. The, like, what is that? I, <laughs> I I mentioned this earlier and then never got to it. When the bookworm sees, uh, when the, he thinks Barbie is Ken, he sees her walking away and he sees the heels. He scoffs. At the end of the movie when they're reading the letter, oh, Barbie has nice handwriting. Uh, I don't think that's Barbie, and they look disgusted at each other. Yeah, yeah. What? And yeah. and that sucks because Ken's the one of the best yeah. things about the movie. I love Ken. <laughs> I love Ken. Ken is Ken is a role model, and <laughs> it, it doesn't even just extend up beyond being flamboyant. I I enjoyed Spanish Buzz to an extent, but I did have to question, you know, if I was if I was Spanish, what would I think of this? I. Obviously, I'm not, so I can't comment, but I think of, spoilers, but I think of a movie like Coco, and I just, I immediately, if I, oh, yeah. if I was this heritage, I would love it. But I think of Spanish buzz, and I just kind of think, is, it, is this offensive? I, I mean, I'll, I'll say that I thought the voice was good, the actor did a good job. Yeah, yeah the actor did a very good job. Everything, you know, involving the, the, the poses, the dances, the music, it's just, would I find this funny? So there, was, there was just a lot of things in Toy Story 3 that I, I, it kind of made me uncomfortable almost and on mm. top of really blatantly realizing that the movie was just trying to get at my nostalgia more than anything else it, 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 it it's good i agree with the notion that it's good but it really rubbed me the wrong way that's yeah if i had to describe toy story 3 my opinion of it in a sentence it would just be it rubbed me the wrong way do you two remember because i had just realized this do you remember back in 2010 when this movie came out um because at the time, Toy Story and Toy Story 2 both had perfect 100% Rotten Tomato scores. And then there were, I think, two critics that gave it low reviews. One of them was a troll, Armin White. And then the other one actually had, like, an actual... He actually had something to say about it. But he still got, like, death threats. Because people I, I were, were really intense about trying to get 
this movie to a 100% score? And how dare he go against the tide? Doesn't Speaking that, which, should we, doesn't yeah, that feel weird it. now? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Speaking um, of which, are we okay? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I I will take the blame for this one. Sorry, guys. No, no, no. I I strongly agree with you. Like, I did not enjoy Toy Story three as much. Is it? I is, I, I more so mean for the uh, the more personal topic. But that is of the past. As is the reason why people like Toy Story three. Oh, uh, oh. all right. So it's yes. our favorite time. Yes, the fun time. Yes, it's time. This is my favorite part. We get our rankings together and we add it out and we try to figure out what is the best Pixar film currently based on our um, combined scores. Our current uh, ranking as of last episode, A Buzz Life, Ratatouille, Toy Story 2, Cars, Toy Story 1, Monsters Incorporated, Wally, Up, Finding Nemo, an incredible at number one. Who? So we all we all share the the same bottom three. Uh, a Buzz Life is Toy Story three better than A Buzz Life? I'm sure there are people watching that are gonna expect me to say, "Man, I really don't know. Toy Story three is like this, and A Buzz Life is like this." But no, this is still the really, 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 really easy choice. Yes. Okay. Um, I agree with that. Random. I agree. Toy Story 3 is better than A Bug's Life. Okay. Moving up, we all three of us have Ratatouille as the uh, second to last. Uh, random, is Toy Story 3 better than Ratatouille? Do you need time? I need time. Give me time. Okay. <laughs> all right, Wash, do you know the answer? I think I do. Elaborate. This feels like me pu- punching down on Ratatouille, which I still, in- which I still enjoy to an extent. At least Toy Story 3 didn't have a insufferable protagonist. I can at least give Toy Story 3 that. Even even if even if its high moments weren't as high, I, I think Toy Story 3 at least feels more complete. Like 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 Kirby had said, uh, Ratatouille is like the A plot and the rest. And I think at least Toy Story 3 is a little more homogenous. It is it's it's like a, a little better structured, so I will put it above uh, Ratatouille. Random, do you need some more time? Yeah, <laughs> Kirby. <laughs> well, like I said, I already have my answer. Um, this one was a little harder than A Bug's Life, but I still ultimately came to conclu- I still ultimately came to the conclusion that I do prefer Toy Story Three over Ratatouille. Okay, and why do you say that? Very simple reason. Random, I'm sorry, plug your ears if you have to. Toy Story 3 did not have Remy. Right. <laughs> that's that that's the long and short of it. Yeah. Yeah. I you know, I, Toy Story 3 did have some uh some some problems that did kind of irk me on a similar level and I like up more and that scene had something that I disliked even more than the scene from Ratatouille where Remy says, Oh, I'm fi- it's fine if Linguini gets fired and loses his job. I don't care. But yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, random, based yes. on your your personal opinion, <laughs> don't let I ours know. change you. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking about it, and uh, Remy, why do you have to be so awful? Toy Story three. <laughs> Toy Story three. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's t- Toy Story three is better. I'm I'm sorry. It's just I I'm, I don't know why I'm apologizing. It's t- <laughs> but it's just yeah, Remy isn't that likable, and I'm. This mo- rep man and Ratatouille isn't really targeted for me, and I, I, I will take a Ken over Remy any day. Right. Heck yeah. Okay. Now uh, we come to the point where the uh, at least the three of us split. I'll, I'll start with myself. Third from the bottom, I have Cars. Is uh, Toy Story three better than Cars? Whew. Yes, but only slightly. Do, 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 do. <laughs> so Toy Story beats Cars for you. Toy Story 3 beats Cars. 
Okay. I mean, I'm gonna. I I want to ask you to elaborate, but uh, based on what you said about Remy with the insufferable protagonist, I kind of saw this coming. <laughs> yes. Um. And I think also like when I had when I had revisited Cars, it felt more on the long side than uh, Toy Story Three did. Um. And and I and I also felt like Toy Story Three had it had slightly higher highs than cars. And I think I I think you you know where my 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 final rank is gonna be on this. But um yeah, I, I, I will put this above. Random do you need some more time? What am I up against again? You have cars third from the bottom. Is Toy Story Three better than cars? No. <gasps> What? Whoa, wait a minute. That's not the answer I was expecting. Neither was I. <laughs> Why what? do you say that? <laughs> whoa, whoa, no. This wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I am not used to hearing this. What? I'm not the only one that thinks this. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, okay. I'm not joking. I quote this, put this in there, send me the hate mail. I think cars is better than Toy Story 3. Yes! Why? Welcome to my world, buddy! Oh, <laughs> uh, I know. Why do Whoa! you- Woo! <laughs> yes. Lightning is a bit of an unsufferable protagonist, yes. But, I found myself caring more in Cars than I did in Toy Story 3. It may be because I watched Toy Story 3 monotonously and haven't watched Cars as much. Uh, I may like- how I may like some of the characters more. I may like the quiet moments. The idea that Kirby fan brought up uh, slow and steady, uh, just being slow in a all fast paced world stands up. And the ending for Cars hit me home better more than the ending for Toy Story three this time. And Michael Keaton's in this movie too. So, <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. They both have Michael Ke yeah. Keaton, and this is a far better Ma Michael. Uh, so either way, Keaton. I get Michael Keaton. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. yeah, I never thought I would say this in a million goddamn years, but yeah, I'm gonna get some hate mail <laughs> <laughs> if we get any mail at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Oh, you think you're gonna get the hate mail? I said Cars was better than Toy Story One, Toy Story Two, Ratatouille, Wally, Up. You've. Uh, are you happy, Kirby fan? <laughs> Well, for what it's worth, I also think Cars Toy is Story than Toy Story 3. So. Toy Story 3 is now my, my bottom three. That's crazy. That's so crazy. That's oh, something wow. Cars was in, but now it's not. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. And I don't think that's going to change. I think that's going to solidify. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have fun putting that in the rankings. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I guess we, we take it to Kirby. You're third to last. Is Toy Story two? Ooh. So, in, in, in fact, above that is Toy Story one. So now you're placing it within the entire franchise, you at least uh, up to the uh, at least up to this point. Yes. Is Toy Story three better than Toy Story two? I think it's really funny that as the movies go along, they get worse. I take Toy Story two. So we both have Toy Story three in our bottom three now. Yeah, I'm looking at this list. It's really funny. Before this, you and uh, Random and Wash had the exact same bottom three. Now that this is how the placements are, me and Random have the same bottom three and not Wash. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That. Wow. Now welcome, you're alone. Welcome to my world. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. It's, it's been a while, but I, it looks like now I'm alone on this in terms of like yeah. putting, putting this any higher up. Oh, look at what it's against, Toy Story 2. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll make it quick. No, I don't think uh, Toy Story 3 is better than Toy Story 2. I, I would not very fair to, to Toy Story 2. And I would honestly say, like, the, the, the biggest thing that, that puts Toy Story 2 above is, as you have said, at least the main cast have their development. And also, what I was going to say uh, earlier, but I had forgotten, um, was that... I can definitely see for Cars, uh, in Cars' favor, that at least Cars, you can enjoy as a standalone movie. I mean, obviously yeah, was... because it is a standalone movie, but it that does uh, give it points above Toy Story 3. I can definitely see that. But I yeah, don't think it can go any further up. 
Whew. We did up. We did up last wow. week. We're we're done really fast. Yeah. Usually these take a while. There's at there's at least one of us that tracks this out, but not this week. Yeah. Can I? I and I'd like to mention. I'm not sure because uh, I have the, this list in front of me. Kobe and I both have Toy Story one, two, and three right next to each other on the list. Yes. Yep. And random, you have you have Monsters Inc. in between Toy Story 1 and 2 and Cars in between 2, uh, two and 3. <laughs> that is perfect. Uh, that's such great symmetry. I love that. I mean, that's not going to last long, I'm sure, but I I'm sure no, no. But it is time to to uh, put this through the machine and get our new rankings. Make sure to give oh, Cars boy. those extra points now. Oh boy! I have my list in front of me, and so from the bottom up, a Buzz Life, a thirty-three points, Ratatouille, a thirty-six, Toy Story three, a forty, and then from this point the uh, the points remain the same. Toy Story two, a forty-four, Cars, a forty-six, Toy Story one, a forty-eight, Master Zink, a fifty-one, Wally, a fifty-four, Up, a fifty-seven, Finding Nemo, a f- fifty-nine. And the Incredibles at sixty. What's up next? Oh boy, I can't let me say it. The next movie coming up is the one, the only, the one we can't wait for. I did the same joke twice. Cars two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really. Interested. I, I'm actually laughing. I'm actually laughing. I'm not crying. I, I'm I don't. Laughing. I'm not looking forward to watching it because all watching experience I've had were, except for the first one, were terrible. <laughs> and I'm so. Okay, so I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna be real with you guys for a second. I'm worried. I have been worried since week two. That's right. As, as, soon, as been... soon as I finished a bug's life, the first thing that came to my mind. I remember was, you saying it on, on the mic. On the mic. The first thing. Well, maybe it was this, maybe the first thing was wow. I'm sad. If not this, if not the first, then the second thing that I thought was, oh my god, is a bug's life going to be worse than Cars two? And if I don't put Cars 2 at the bottom of a Pixar list, I'm never going to hear the end of it. <laughs> so <laughs> I am worried. I, you know, I'm kind of worried about that too, mm. but also not worried. Because... Well, you know what? We know Toy Story 3 is going to be better. So there's that okay. at least going for Toy Story 3. Uh, you know, uh, I was about to say maybe not, but then there's Ratatouille and I'm like, yeah, because <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't think well, it's going to be worse than Ratatouille because... The likable protagonist ain't gonna save it. <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> Whew. Oh, this oh has been a downer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is I not have a headache. Their, now. Um, <laughs> this is not. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I, I have a headache. <laughs> <laughs> Did you really not think I would choose Cars over Toy Story Three? Ah, uh, I thought you were gonna go Toy Story Three over Cars, but I have also just kind of accepted the fact that I'm the only person that legitimately really likes it. Mm. Uh, I like I it more than you think. I just, I just kind of expect people to say that it's not going to be better than other things when I hear about it. I was surprised, especially Toy Story three. I figured that despite everything that you didn't like about it, the the the, the, the charm of the Toy Story cast would have at least put it over. But no, it didn't. No, <laughs> no, it don't. <laughs> it no. did not. Did not. I didn't have a good viewing experience. Apparently. So okay. So here's one final note before we uh, leave this. This I want to get this out now. Yeah. I know you two disagree, especially looking at your placements for the other films. But I th- I've become very distilled with the Toy Story franchise. Uh none of the movies really do much of anything for me anymore, and that makes me kind of sad. Yeah. I mean, you two, still, you two still have Toy Story 1, and I'm not going to take that away from you or anybody. I mean... And I still it, like Toy Story 1, but definitely not as much as I used to. Yeah. The more no, Pixar I, movies we watch, the more I just kind of think, okay, it, it's good. It's good. It's a good entry movie, but it's just, that's really it. I think the, <laughs> the allegory that I that I had, um, I don't remember which episode it was, but Toy Story 1 is kind of like the Super Mario Brothers of the Pixar films. Both like yeah. li- both like literally in that it's an entry film, but also in that it's fairly simple. And it, 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 the simplicity works in a lot of respects, but it also means that once the later movies uh, come in, you really start to see that Pixar can do better than this. It's kind yeah. of like watching the first video of your favorite YouTube channel after they've got successful. 
and when yeah, I went back and watched time. Random's first video the other. <laughs> put that in the title. Put that in the cards and like annotations. <laughs> yeah, link to link to link to Random's video, and then immediately after, link to one of mine. <laughs> to everybody listening, we're sorry. Thank we're you. Sorry. sorry. So sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. But but also thank you for at least uh, uh, going through with this. And uh, um, if we were wrong about Toy Story 4, let our previous self know. Yeah, I, I will let my previous self know. Yeah, it would be like, you could be, Toy Story 4 could be like, oh my god, it's amazing. It sends off the franchise far better than <laughs> Toy Story 3 ever did. Or, oh my god, it's terrible. Why are you hitting on Toy Story 3? Toy Story 4 was obviously much worse. Yeah, but we'll see. But, <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Anyway, uh, in, in the meantime... Thank you, everybody, for listening. I have been the watch. I'm depressed that I like cars more than Toy Story 3. <laughs> and I'm a bug's life. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think we broke watch. <laughs> we, and you we, broke what the we in this? <laughs> I take full responsibility for this. Thank you. <laughs> and that's how we're ending it off. And that's how we're ending Bye. it off. Bye.